We are throwing it back to the year 2018 today. This is the $95 TYT MD UV380. And today we're asking, is this still a good radio in the year 2024? That's what I want to talk about today on KFI Barry Ham Radio. How's it going everybody? My name is Chase, call sign KI5IRE. So I received this $95 TYT MD UV380 2 meter 70 centimeter DMR HT for Christmas this past year. This HT was released back in 2018 and at the time of its release it was going for around $129 on Amazon and some other online retailers. And this is actually a DMR HT that I've been wanting to get my hands on since even before I picked up my first DMR HT that was my Anytone 878 back in 2020, around the time that I got my tech license. And after finally owning one of these radios, I gotta say, I'm actually really surprised at the quality of this radio for only $95. Again, this radio was released back in 2018, and while it may look sort of similar to something like a Motorola XPR series radio, it is certainly not one in terms of ruggedness. I mean, you can just hear how plasticky this thing feels and it's only IP57 rated, so it's only dust and water resistant. And if you're looking for your first DMR HT with a beautiful menu system and just really easy to understand, this one may not be it. The menu system does kind of lack a little bit in being kind of easy to understand and being pretty. Now, I'll say the menu system on this radio is not horrible, but compared to other radios on the market these days, these are a little bit outdated and sometimes the terminology is a bit difficult to understand due to some inaccurate translations from Chinese to English, but at the end of the day, it still gets the job done. Now the outdated menu system on this radio is not that big of a drawback when you actually hear the audio that comes out of this radio. The audio on this radio is actually surprisingly good again for only being a $95 radio. So the audio on this radio does not really sound that bad at all compared to other radios around the similar price on the market right now. And honestly, there are times when I'm using this radio, I can't even really tell the difference between the quality of the audio from something like my Anytone 878 or some other people on the air who are using something like a Motorola. The audio of this radio, again, just sounds really good. It's pretty crisp, pretty clear. Here's a quick comparison between this radio and my Anytone 878. All right, so real quick, I just wanna show you guys a quick comparison between the audio from the TYT MD UV380 and the Anytone 878. So how I'm gonna do this comparison test is basically I'm gonna transmit into the TYT and then we're gonna hear the audio come back out of it. And then we're gonna transmit from the TYT and hear the audio come out of the Anytone. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing with the Anytone as well. Okay, I have five, I already testing the audio on my TYT MD UV380. Okay, I have five, I already testing the audio on my TYT MD UV380. All right, and again, that was the audio going into the TYT and then coming out of the TYT. So now we'll test with the audio coming out of the Anytone as well. Okay, I have already testing the audio on my TYT MDUV380. Okay, I have already testing the audio on my TYT MDUV380. So it's a little bit louder on the Anytone just because I had the volume turned up a little bit higher, but as you can see, the audio is roughly about the same um, in terms of the quality between the two speakers. And now we will test out the mic and speaker on the Anytone. KF5 okay, already testing the audio on my Anytone 878. All right, so again, that's the audio coming in from the microphone on the Anytone 878 and then coming out of the speaker on the Anytone 878. And now we'll do the same again with the audio coming into the Anytone and then out the speaker on the TYT. KF5 okay, already testing the audio on my Anytone 878. KF5 okay, already testing the audio on my Anytone 878. 
All right, again, that's the audio from the microphone on the 878 coming out of the speaker on the TOIT. And as you can see, really the audio from both of these radios is roughly the same quality. Both of them sound pretty good. The TOIT I think has a little bit more of a low end sound to it. And then the Antitone has a little bit more of the high tones to it. So, you know, like I said, roughly the same. They sound a little bit different, but they both sound still pretty good. Now in terms of spectral purity and spurious emissions, honestly, I have no clue how this radio performs. I don't currently own a spectrum analyzer, so I'm not able to test that on this radio. And also one more thing I wanted to note as well, because I don't have a way to test this, I don't know how the front end filtering of this radio really performs when you have it in a high RF environment or something like that. I know that's a big topic that people talk about with desensitization in the front end and just different filtering on the front end. So I don't want to have a way to test that. So I don't really know how well this radio performs in terms of that. And now this radio does lack some features that other radios like my Anytone 878 does not lack. So if there is a certain set of features that you are looking for in your first DMR HT, beyond this just being a basic DMR HT, just know that some of the features that you are looking for probably will not be included in this radio. First things first, I just wanna go ahead and throw this out there. This particular model of this radio does not have a GPS module. So with that being said, that means there is no APRS on this radio. I haven't really looked for this feature, but I don't know if there's a way to actually transmit APRS maybe with a manually input GPS coordinate. Um, since it doesn't have a GPS, I haven't even messed with looking into APRS on this, but just know this radio does not have a GPS module, so APRS via GPS is not possible on this particular model. And another area where this radio lacks is the customization area. So if you don't really like the way that the menus look on this radio, or you don't like the color scheme or the theme on the radio screen, well, unfortunately, there's not a way that I found at least to be able to change it in this radio without having to install a third-party firmware like OpenGD77. But just be aware that if you do purchase this radio and you do intend to install something like OpenGD77 on it and open up some of the more customizable features through that particular firmware, firmware, just know that you could potentially void the warranty on your radio. And one more downside that I want to mention on this radio is the contacts. If you have a look at this right now, you can see there is somebody talking on the screen there. Um, and all it says is ID unknown, and it gives you the radio ID of the person talking, but you don't have any information. You don't have the person's name. You don't have the person's location, all of that. I did load the version of the contacts list that has been formatted for this radio from radioid.net. However, I've not been able to get it to actually display the name and location of the person. It might be possible, but it's obviously not simple and there's not a way to customize it like something like the Anytone 878. So just be aware of that. I do need to drag it into a CSV editor like Excel or something, make sure that it's formatted properly and just check it out, make sure that all the data did copy over, um, but just know that, that that is an issue. And one more thing about the contacts as well, this radio is only limited to about 100,000 contacts, which if you know anything about DMR, the radio ID list worldwide is well over 100,000 contacts, so you are pretty limited. And even here in the United States, the DMR radio ID database is larger than 100,000 contacts, so you won't even be able to fit in the entire United States radio ID list. So that's just something to note as well. That is a limitation. So if you do buy this radio, you will actually have to pay attention to the call sign and you won't be able to read it off the screen um, like you would on some other newer radios, which have a larger storage capacity for DMR IDs and the contact information. So both of those two things are also a drawback. And also one more drawback that I want to mention on this radio as well is just the CPS of this radio. The CPS on this radio is horrible. Um, when you boot it up for the first time, it's usually in Chinese. So you have to kind of go through all the menus and find out where it says English, and then you have to click on that. And then even again, a lot of the text inside of the CPS is poorly translated uh, from Chinese to English. So that is one thing to note as well. And also the CPS is just really buggy as well. So when I end up programming this radio, what I end up doing is programming it in RT systems. And I gotta say, I highly recommend programming this radio if you purchase it in RT systems. RT systems is a much better program, a uh, lot less buggy. I really haven't actually found any bugs in RT systems actually. So there's actually customer support with that software 
and it's just overall a much better experience using that software. I think the only thing that you can't do in RT systems is load the contact database. So again, if you do decide to pick up one of these radios, I highly recommend heading on over to RT Systems website and picking up a copy of their software. They're not a sponsor of the channel or anything. It's just a really solid software that I really like for programming this radio and some of my other radios as well. Just a good software, good customer support, and uh, really just a much overall better experience. So those were a few things that are drawbacks on this radio, but now on to some of the things that I really actually like about this radio. Again, like I said, the audio of this radio for $95 is really good. Um, I was really surprised. I mean, it's not perfect and you can't really expect the audio quality to be perfect, 100% crystal clear for $95. And also I don't even know if this particular model of this radio has the AMBE2 uh, I think it's the plus vocoder on it. Um, I know there's another model of this radio that does have that, but this one doesn't. So, I mean, it's just your basic DMR vocoder, um, but it doesn't really sound horrible for the price of $95. And also one more thing that I'll note too, this thing uses a lithium ion battery, which is really nice. I mean, most radios these days have a lithium ion battery. I mean, you're not going to find very many without them, but I mean, I did think I'd mention that, I mean, for $95, some people might expect it to be like running on double A's or something like that, but no, it does have a lithium ion battery and really the battery is actually really good. I've left it on for several hours and haven't even lost a bar of battery and I've used it several hours at a time and barely drained the battery at all. And one more thing too, I really like about this radio is it just uses your standard Kenwood accessory port. Uh, you can see that there, it's just the standard Kenwood. So you can use a lot of the uh, Baofeng mics, the PowerWorks mic I think is the one that I like the most for these radios because um, I use the same one on my Anytone 878. So that's a solid microphone for this radio and just being able to connect a headset to this radio is pretty awesome. And also this radio being on the cheaper side, I really do like how cheap it is because this can just be my beater radio. And for the last couple weeks since I actually finally got this thing up and going since I had it, um, I've just kind of been taking it out a little bit more often than the Anytone 878, just seeing how I liked it. And like I said, it's not a horrible radio. I mean, it definitely, like I said, lacks in the features department, but not a terrible radio at all. Definitely gets the job done. And I think when I go and do things where I might not want to take the Anytone um, and potentially lose it or break it, I think I'll be taking this thing along with me. I mean, like I said, just a great radio. And if I break it or lose it, I won't feel too bad about it. So if you're looking for an inexpensive DMR radio in 2024, or just your first DMR radio in general, I think this is actually still a really good radio in the year 2024. And again, as I said earlier, this thing does have some downsides to it, and I probably will never replace my Anytone 878 with this thing, but I definitely think it's a solid backup radio. So I hope this video helps you if maybe you're looking for your first DMR radio and maybe you're on a tight budget, or maybe you're just looking for an inexpensive radio that you can toss in a backpack and beat up or, you know, not be afraid to lose, you know, just a good backup radio. You know, like I said, I think this is a good radio for that. And I'll be sure to leave a link to where you can find this radio down in the description below. And maybe you're using one of these radios now, or maybe you've used one in the past, or maybe you just have some thoughts on this radio after looking at the spec sheet on it. Let me know what your thoughts about this radio are down in the description below. Even though this radio has some drawbacks, I think it's a good basic first DMR radio for somebody who's just getting their feet wet in DMR, or maybe just trying it out and seeing if they actually like DMR or not. It's good radio for that or like I said it's a good beater radio if you need one to beat up and not be afraid to lose. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys as always so much for watching. Until next time 73.